see through all of that, and that's why it has to come from your heart. It's got to be sincere. Uh, you know, I could always find you or anyone doing something right. I don't have to make it up. If I'm mindful and I'm a coach and I'm out on the field, I can find every one of those people on that field doing something right, and I can point it out to them. But if I'm going to make something up, like, oh, you're the best thing that ever happened to us, uh, you know, that person will know that's not true. Uh, or if I tell them you're more important to me than anybody, they know that's not true. But if I treat them with respect and I, and I love them, and I want to talk about that for a minute because I know a lot of your listeners might not know how, where I'm coming from with that concept of love. But if I treat them with respect and trust them and, and love them, uh, they'll go the distance. They'll, They'll feel valued, they'll feel like they count, and they'll do whatever it takes to get the best, the most out of themselves. And that's the environment that we create, and that's our power as a leader to walk into an environment and to create a safe emotional environment where people could feel secure and open their hearts to learning, and then we can make our entry into their hearts, and that's when the best work is done. If I can take a minute, Dave, and just... I want to go back on that word love because sometimes people, people confuse that. Yeah, people confuse that with with a romantic kind of uh, image of, of what that might be. I remember when John Wooden, the famous John Wooden, iconic basketball coach at UCLA, when he was retiring, he had about fifteen people in his face asking him the question. So, coach, can you tell us? Why were you so successful? And they were ready with their pens and they were going to like write down everything he said about his famous uh, pyramid of success. But he never went there. He never talked about that. He said, honestly, the reason why I had so much success was because I had a lot of love in my coaching. So coaches today, the successful coaches and the successful leaders and the successful athletes and the successful parents, we're all finding out that if you have love in your heart, then what's going to happen is people are going to want to be with you and they're going to want to follow you. But you can't fake that because I know, I know when I'm feeling loved. Now, let me define the love that I'm talking about so then we can go from there. So love is not a commodity, okay? It's not something you buy and sell or give or take. It's not a commodity. It's a capacity. So now that I'm defining it as a capacity, we could all love each other, right? Mm -hmm. It's the capacity to love, which really means that capacity is the capacity to connect. And that's the word you used, Dave, a few minutes ago. So we go from loving people like I really I might not like your behavior as an athlete on the team. You might be disruptive, but I love you for who you are. You're a human being trying to find out in this world a way to live happily, a way to give to others. And I have to acknowledge that and see that in you. And so I must love you for that. And by my definition of love being a capacity it's the capacity to connect and care and from connection the sky's the limit so the great coaches like the woodens or the dean smiths or the anson durants from carolina women's soccer uh how about uh steve kerr with the golden state warriors some of the names your listeners might recognize they all know that their success is the result of winning the relationship game not necessarily the basketball game or the soccer game. So good leadership today, unlike perhaps what you were talking about back in the 60s, good le- although I have other examples of really great leaders back there, Bobby Kennedy, for instance, my hero, right. uh, Martin Luther King, uh, these were amazing leaders. And guess what? Both of those names jump off the page at me, uh, Bobby Kennedy uh, for instance, uh, loved, loved people. And uh, 
he had the capacity to connect with people. And when you connect with people, all things are possible. And and Martin Luther King, the, he, he could connect with people. And you felt the caring, you felt the love. So, yeah, you know, if leaders, and I'll tell you what, they're not all there, but if coaches and leaders in this country would stop thinking old school and using methodologies that are out of date, they might want to open up to the idea of all these people who are successful. There's one thing in common with all of them. They have a lot of love for the people they're leading. They know how to form a relationship and they connect with them. <clears throat> yeah, and I think when you mentioned looking at the people are successful, that's another thing that we should talk about was what is it to be successful because we often look at it as the balance sheet, whether it's the balance of victories or statistics, um, corporate rankings, how, what yeah. do you possess? And, yeah. and those things often do come to people who, like you say, th through a loving approach to leadership, they yeah. do get rewarded in, in yeah. great ways. But we mistake that because that's the easiest thing to find. I mean, it, it's pretty easy yeah. to check balance sheets and, and see mm -hmm. what's, you know, what car somebody drives. So that's the part where I think it's most important to talk about what is success. And, yeah. and yeah. I think I'd like to talk about, you know, some of the, uh, the opposites in your book, The Way of the Champion, because now we're going to get towards those things where, well, if we didn't win, we lost. If you lost, you're a loser. You know, there's zero sum mentality, yeah. but, yeah. um, I, I could pick a few here, but, uh, you, you talk about, you know, soft and hard and fast and slow and things like that uh i'd like to l let you just throw out some of those um i think those ideas we like to turn on their head because uh sometimes we're misled by terms as to the right path to to really um again find the way of being a champion mm -hmm. i want to just sort of go back a second on the, on your thought about success because i think you're making a brilliant point and it's something we don't want to overlook uh, success, you're right. I mean, in, in our society growing up, I was taught that success meant you had the house, the kids, the car, the all of that stuff, the wife. I mean, it was like success was measured in terms of uh, commodities, in terms of uh, uh, what you achieved, in terms of outcomes and results. And truly, that is one form of success. But that success, ironically, does not come unless you have a success prior to that. And that means being successful in the process, day in and day out. And, and, and I, I, I talk with my athletes and I say, you should only have one goal. It's not to win a national championship. Your goal should be today to do the best you can in order to be the best you can be so that you position yourself for great things to happen. That's all. Not to win a championship or anything like that. And I call that whole package winning the day. I like so that. you don't win a championship. Yeah, yeah. Like win the day. Oh, okay. How do I win the day? All right. Are you doing the best you can to be the best you can be so that you position yourself for that? And and they like that because it's achievable. It's it's a day to day process. It's living the life of a champion. And I remember John Wooden, uh, and I, I probably won't be able to quote him verbatim, but the essence of this statement is just precious. And it's, he considers success as the inner satisfaction of knowing that you did your best so that you can be the best you can be. And it was that inner that inner feeling when you go to bed at night and you put your head on the pillow and you ask yourself the question, did I live today? Did I live fully today? And if the answer is yes, you go to sleep. If it's no, you say, what do I need to change? And you put that high on your list of tomorrow because tomorrow is another day, hopefully, that we get to make that shift. And it becomes a day-to-day -day process. So success is right now in the moment, I feel very successful being with you, success in the sense that I'm doing the best work I can possibly do. There's, 
there's not another place, honestly, I'd rather be than right here doing what I'm doing. Uh, there's not a, another person I'd rather be with than you either. Uh, you're the perfect person for me right now. And success is staying in that moment and focusing in on serving, on being, giving the best I can. Because I know if there's 10,000 people listening to this and one person, it changes their life, then that's why my life is worth living. So success is an ongoing daily I don't want to say minute by minute process, but really, if we did boil it down, it does become a minute by minute process of how we go about our day, day in and day out. And can you win the day? And that's what I mean by winning the day. If you win the day, there's a good chance you'll win a lot of games on the on the, on the tennis court too. Yeah, and when you mentioned that about uh, the John Wooden, the, that inner feeling, and it reminded me of. Uh, I used to live uh, in Jacksonville, and we used to get to Orlando, Florida at Disney's Wide World, and they used to have, and I I can't believe they took them down, but they used to have these um, signs up on the windows of these inspirational statements, and one of them that caught me when I would take my daughters there, uh, and the time they were oh, probably like kindergarten through seventh grade, the four of them, and there was one that said, uh, and I forget who it was, and I'm paraphrasing, was the uh, image of a champion is someone... Uh, drenched in sweat, hunched over to the point of exhaustion when nobody's watching. That was Mia Hamm. Ah, excellent, excellent. That and was Mia Hamm, and she said that right in front of a coach, Anson Durance, and Anson oftentimes have, has gotten credit for that. That's whose he, name is actually up there, yes, when you, you yeah, said it. But he, yeah. he vehemently opposes that. He said, uh, this is Mia Hamm speaking, not me. It, and by the way, while we're on that quick topic for people listening, go look up quotes from Mia Hamm because those are going to be, whether or not you have sons or daughters, it's convenient for me because I have four daughters, but she says some wow. of the amazing things. And that one took me back to being in high school and playing basketball and being five foot eight, no star basketball player. I just, you know, was playing. But mm -hmm. I'd shovel the snow off the drive at some point. Uh, when we'd get that warm day in February and I remember just shooting and had a little music on. In fact, I think it might have even been the opening song here to the show, which is why I have it there. But I remember just making moves that I have no idea how good they looked, but I was playing a real game, following my shots. That's what I used to do because it was treating uh, every day like game day, and it was fun. And I still I think good. back to that. That Again, and I was no star basketball player, but that's the way my dad, you know, taught me to play ball. That's the way he played ball, you know, uh, back in the 50s, you know, in the street as he put the guys running around the street with a taped-up baseball, would just play some ball. Um mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm really glad you, you brought that up um, because mm -hmm. it's, it is an, it's all internal. And um, I, I've come to even say on the job that really just every day is game day around here. And they say, what do you mean? I'm like, well, the, we're not turning the project in today, but every day is game day. Just go about it, and when we screw it up, guess what? We don't care, just like in a game. <laughs> yeah. just gonna, it, we fix it and we move on. And it's called the game of life. Yeah. Exactly. And it's bigger it's bigger than any game we'll ever play. And it's more important than any game we'll ever play. And the game of life is played each day, one day at a time. And it's it all comes back to an attitude and it all comes back to a desire to to be the best person you could possibly be, if not the best athlete, and to influence others with the power of your influence so that we can all make sense out of and and meet and bring meaning to, to to our everyday life what kind of influence do you see you know because people say how do i influence somebody i'm just playing ball what good let's get into that a little bit yeah well <laughs> dave honestly uh there's not one person out there right now listening that does not influence people all the time uh we are always, always influencing people. The power of your, your influence is never neutral. Let me make that statement. It's never neutral. 
You can either walk into a room and light it up, or you can walk into that same room and 